Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today uh, video is going to go over three different areas. So the first area we're going to go over is shot to shot variation um, part weight. So we're going to do what issues you can do for part weight if you have a shot to shot. One shot might be heavier, one shot might be lower and you're inconsistent on your shot weight. So I'll go over the three different areas. I'll go over the, the material the uh, mold and the machine so those three areas are always what you want to look into usually the machine side you look into first then your material then your molds the last thing because the mold you might have to do a lot of stuff to a mold so always i always try to go over those three variables always is what i try to do um, and then what i'll do is i'll break down the video a little bit more and i'll go into part dimension if your part is too large what you can do and part dimension if your part is too small what you can do on those areas to try to make the part better and what you what techniques you can try <clears throat> to, to actually try to see how that all that works out for you so in this video like i said i'm going to go over part to part or shot to shot variation then we'll break it down we'll go uh dimension of part too large and dimension of part too small okay so stay tuned i'm going to go to the whiteboard over here and go over some steps that you can try to see if this will help you out with any issues that you're having in your uh part to part shot difference um like i said this is base case scenario if you have a cycle time that's running perfect and you've you've been running it this way for a while these are some settings you can check to make sure you're still running good and everything okay guys Okay guys, so here's the whiteboard. I don't know how good you guys can actually see this, um, but like I said, we're gonna go over shot to shot variation for part weight. Now I always start with the machine side is what I always try to start with, and then go to material and then mold, because the mold would be more expensive to fix and the issues that you might have. So for part to part, <clears throat> if your part weight's higher or lower, these are some of the things you can try to do. So increasing your melt decompression, Increasing back pressure using position or hydraulic transfer. Okay um, Using velocity controlled field Increasing cushion by the shot size. So add more material to make your cushion get a little bit bigger Like you always want to try to keep your cushion um, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch always you Go any smaller than that. You might have a little bit of inconsistency there So increase pack and hold pressure increase pack and hold time Increase injection pressure, increase injection high timer. So on older presses, you have what they call a boost timer or a high timer. You'll increase that a little bit more to where you're putting more plastic into the part. Increase barrel temperature, and then check ceiling surface on the nozzle radius, seat, and body. Make sure all that is, is correct. Check screw tips and barrel for any kind of wear or corrosions, okay? These are some of the things you can try on the machine side. Now on the material side, you want to decompress or decre decrease ugh, decrease percentage of regrind or eliminate regrind altogether, and then check for uneven material temperature. So you know, use your parameter, check your material, purge some out, check it, see how if it's all consistent, if you're still getting the same melt every single time. Check for material contamination. So maybe there's something in the material. Maybe it got mixed with something else or something. You know. It just depends on that <clears throat> on your mold side so you want to check uh, consistency of water temperature and flow so check in your make sure all your halves of your tool are the same temperature like put a parameter on there check the surface temperature make sure you got good flow coming through the mold there's the water's going good your flow meters are good everything's good and introduce cold slug pocket so what you could do is you could actually do a cold slug pocket that would help you out on that too um, where the material would go into coming into the into the tool so these are things you can try for part variation so try this what i'll do is i'll break down now i'll go and erase all this and then i'll put on here part dimension for too large and too small and that way you'll understand if you if you're running apart and it's too small it's warping or it's shrinking too much or whatever these are some of the things you can try to fix those issues okay so stay tuned i'll erase this and come back okay guys i'm back after that little bit of a pause break 
So this is actually going to be your part dimension too large and part dimension too small. Okay, so this is what you can try to do if your part's too large. These are the things you can do on the machine side. So you can decrease pack and hold time, decrease pack and hold pressure, decrease cooling and pause time, increase barrel temperature, increase screw back pressure, and decrease injection rate, adjust the profile slower. So you might have a three stage profile or five stage profile or just a one stage all the way down. Just take it, make it a little slower, make your fill time slower. On the material side, there's nothing you can do about making the part too large or too small. There really isn't. Last but least, that'd be the mold side. This would be last resort. Increase mold temperature or change physical, physical, ugh, physical dimensions of the mold. Okay, that's the only way to really do it. Now, if you look at both these, they're almost identical. The large part, you're decreasing everything. On this side, you're basically increasing everything. So uh, if the part's too small, you're going to increase pack and hold pressure. You're going to increase pack and hold time. You're going to increase cooling time and the pause time. Decrease barrel temperature. Increase injection rate or adjust the profile faster. So you have it go faster, make your fill time faster. Increase cushion by increasing shot size, okay? So make your cushion a little bit bigger, <clears throat> okay? Um, like I said, on the material side, there's nothing you can really do on the material side. I I don't know. I mean, the properties on the material, I mean, we can go into shrinkage and all that stuff and warpage, and it, that's all a whole other new game. Um, on the mold side on this one, you can decrease mold temperature, clean vents, or add, enlarge them, make them bigger, um, and then change physical dimension of the mold. So these are a couple things you can try for a part dimension. Um, really, I have no clue. I mean, like I said, you got to get a robust cycle going. And then after you get the robust cycle going, do your part weight all the time. Check every part weight. What I do is I do like a fill only shot with no pack and hold on it. Make sure all the parts are identical as far as the, the appearance and the weight of the part. And then add your pack and hold on there. And then weigh those parts and then see how you look. That way you'll know if you're really consistent as far as making a part, you know, and it's staying pretty consistent as far as your overall appearance of the part and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace. Oh.